So today I'm going to show you guys how I build my HVAC baffle boxes for my studio's new heating and cooling system. True Sound Studios is in your ears. So guys, welcome back. Let's get right into this video. Now, this image on the screen here I got from a Gear Sluts web page, I guess you would call it. And these are a bunch of different ways to build baffle boxes. Now that image to the very left is essentially just a wooden box with acoustic foam in it. Now the positives to that is it's very easy to build, but the negatives, and I've actually built that particular design in my last studio, and the bad thing was is probably like six months later, it kind of started to smell a little bit from the, the moisture getting inside of there. And probably the biggest negative is it really cuts down on the airflow. So when you put your hand over the vent after the unit was on, like you could barely feel the air coming out. So it just really slows down the airflow quite a bit. So the image more in the middle there, that is the way that I'm gonna be building um, these baffle boxes, which is essentially just a flexible ductwork inside of a very heavy duty, thick wooden box. And if you look all the way to the right, you can see there's kind of like two ways to do that. There's the typical, which is kind of like a big labyrinth of um, a lot of different 90s and turns. But below that is the better design, and that's what I'm gonna be building today. So it's not as many 90s and sharp corners, um, and mainly I think it is because you can put more fiberglass insulation inside of the box to help absorb more of the sound, especially when it comes to that low end. All right, so let's get into building these. Okay, so now it is time to build our baffle boxes. So one more time, a baffle box is just simply a big box with flexible ductwork in it and a whole bunch of insulation. And the whole point of it is to allow our conditioned air, so whether we're trying to heat or cool our studio, we're gonna allow that conditioned air to be able to flow through the box, but the box will help eat up the sound so we're not just um, letting the sound go right through our ductwork and transfer to other rooms or other parts of your house or whatever. You're gonna need a couple things. I'm building this out of half inch plywood. I just happen to have 14 sheets of four by eight half inch plywood laying around. I'm gonna use that and then also have half inch drywall um, on site with me today. So between the two of those, I think I'm gonna build the inner box out of the plywood and then do another layer of half inch drywall with possibly the green glue. Um, just to kind of isolate the whole uh, the whole box from obviously the rest of everything else. And then additionally, you're gonna need some ductwork, some flexible ductwork, and it's recommended that you get the insulated stuff. Okay, so I have two spaces that I need to heat and cool. One space is the live room, the vocal booth, which I'm, I think I'm gonna start calling a vocal booth. And then the other room um, is the control room. Now the control room is definitely much bigger than the live room and because of that I'm going to use 8 inch ductwork in the control room and I'm going to use 6 inch ductwork in the live room, the vocal booth. So now each room has to have one duct that's pulling the air back into the system and another duct that is pushing that conditioned air back out. So the control room is gonna need two baffle boxes and the live room is gonna need two baffle boxes. So in the total, in the end, I'm gonna have to build four of these baffle boxes. Two will be for the eight inch duct work and two will be for the six inch duct work. Okay, so let's start building this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is I laid down my four by eight sheet of plywood and I need to take my duct work and kind of figure out how this is all gonna fit and what size box am I gonna to need to make? So I'm just gonna grab this flex ductwork. And I think what I want to happen is the air to come in from here, wrap around, snake up, and then come back out the top. So it's essentially going to be just a big S shaped. So I'm gonna leave maybe, I don't know, four inches or so at the end here. Um, to add just additional insulation throughout this whole box. I mean, it kind of looks like, you know, I got about my four inches here. You know, you got about maybe a couple inches here and here, and then my four inches over here. So it looks like that four feet um, long box is probably going to be what we need. And then I'm just gonna measure from here 
to the beginning of this wood, about 25 inches. Now I'd still need to add that extra four inch. I'm just using four inches as a little buffer because we have half inch of material and I can put in like an R13 insulation additionally. I'm gonna make this box looks like 30 inches, um, I guess high, 48 inches long. And the width of it is going to be, it's gotta fit in between my 16 on center framing for my ceiling joists which means uh, I have 14 and a half inches of space in between that. So those are my dimensions, 14 and a half inches wide, 48 inches long and 30 inches high. So now it's time to start cutting some of this plywood up. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the baffle box for the live room, the vocal booth. So this baffle box has to be different because of the fact that the roof is extremely low over here. This is essentially the end of the garage. So I'm making this box on an angle. You can see I kind of highlighted the, uh, the angle of this box. So essentially the air is gonna come in here and it'll kind of snake its way out the back. And it's gonna have to be on an angle like this. this is actually the only way to fix it. It's gonna be like this and then it'll come in something like this. So this part will be in the room here and then it'll snake its way kind of out the back and it'll be kind of at like an upward angle. And this box right now is probably a little bit big for um, exactly this duct because this is six inch duct so it is obviously two inches smaller. Um, so I just gotta tweak these dimensions a little bit and then <laughs> hopefully this box won't be massively heavy and I can be able to secure it um, on the angle like this. So it'll be a, a little bit of a challenge, but um, unfortunately this is the only way that I'm gonna be able to fit a box of this size, this, a, a baffle box of this size up in that space. Okay, so now that I have pretty much all the plywood cut, now I need to start joining all these pieces together. But with plywood, especially like this is half inch, four ply plywood, if I try to just screw one piece of plywood into the next or even nail it, it's just not gonna hold. It's just not a very good material to be able to connect in through the, uh, through the different plies. So my alternative, pretty much the only way to do it is to somehow make some sort of frame. So I'm just gonna use these. This is two by twos. Um, essentially a half of a two by four and it's inch and a half by inch and a half and I'm gonna cut all these to size and this is going to make up the framing that will connect all the pieces of plywood together. Okay so now I have my two by twos and I got my plywood and what I'm gonna do is very simply print this on top, line up all these edges kind of like that and I'm gonna go ahead and screw them in. Take your soundproofing caulking. This sealant is going to, you know, acoustically seal the two pieces of wood so we don't have any bad joints where air and sound would just be able to come out. So I'm just gonna very simply run a bead down this whole thing. Now this is happening because 45 degrees out here. <laughs> this caulking is just simply cold. Now we can actually take this, smush it right on top. Now we've formed a really good seal and then we can even further that up by putting some screws in. This is just a great way to be able to really truly seal up the box um, and not have to do so much caulking afterwards. I have cut one hole. Um, this is actually gonna be the hole that faces down into the studio. So now I'm deciding whether, um, where to put the other hole, if I should put it out the back here, or if it should go where I originally planned, which is right here. So it would be one here and one on the total opposite side. Okay, so now I got the framing on one of the ends, and you can see I just once again, did all the two by twos and just a couple screws in it just to hold it all together. Then I'll go ahead and caulk every single edge um, and also make sure I get right here where the plywood meets the actual two by two, this, this edge here, all around it. 
and then uh, throw in both the ends and then I can take off one of the sides and we can start filling it with the duct and then a lot more fiberglass insulation. So I know it's a little it's a little dark up here but this is what it looks like from up in the attic. That is the actual air exchanger, the heater AC unit and uh, you can see the the hole where that is where the ductwork would go down into the studio. So this is obviously from the other side now and you can see how far this uh, the heat exchanger is away from here. It's probably only maybe three feet and I think either coming out of the back or the top will work but I think I'm gonna go with the top. Okay so now that I've decided that I'm gonna put the the second hole on the top um, I went ahead and just found the center and I took this, this is a eight inch duct. Um, this is actually not the piece we're using, but I just put it on here, traced it out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this out with a jigsaw. Okay, so now we're looking at the bottom of this baffle box. And you can see I've already pushed the duct work through and I'm gonna leave myself maybe four or five inches because this is actually going to come through the drywall ceiling. So the drywall will be like this, and this will come through here. I just need enough to be able to put my, um, my ductwork end, my diffuser, whatever I decide to do inside of the room. Just enough to be able to put it in here and tape it um, is really all you need. So you don't need a ton sticking through. And um, we don't have to do any crazy air sealing around here. Just because our drywall is gonna butt right up against here, we will acoustically caulk this when the drywall goes on. And then um, all that sound will get transferred inside of this box and eventually deadened by it passing through all the fiberglass insulation. And then last being stopped by the layers of material that we're gonna put on the rest of this box. So this half inch plywood is not enough material. Um, you're gonna have to put some more drywall on here and I will just not yet um, I want to fit the inside of the box first but yeah so this is what it looks like at least from here and now we can go ahead and orientate the duct inside of this box so once again this is the bottom this is the top and I got the duct coming out here and I've snaked it through and I just cut this to fit and it'll essentially go like this and what we need to do is put a divider here made out of wood and another divider here. Okay, so before I can actually put any of the insulation here, um, obviously we need to know where these wood baffles need to go so that we can work the insulation around it. So what I did is I took some two by sixes, some cutoffs from the studio, and I just kind of, um, I picked a spot that I felt was in the middle of the duct um, kind of divided this whole box up into three. So this is actually 17 and a half inches from the end. I cut these to the exact height right here because our plywood's gonna lay right over the top of this. We're just gonna put these two together and in between these joints here, once again, I'll do the acoustic caulking. And I'm using the two by six because it's nice and thick inch and a half of material is a good amount of material. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and caulk these and then I gotta do the same thing in the other spot and then screw them in and then we can start putting the insulation in. Okay, so I got the wood baffles in. I got one here and one there. And the point of this is to not let the sound take that direct shortcut from the one end of the box that has a hole in it to the other end. And obviously because of this, the sound kinda has to bounce around to be able to work its way out. So it's gonna be at least eaten up as much as possible by all the insulation that is in this box. Okay, so this is the duct that is coming out of the top of the box. And this is what's gonna to connect to my heat exchanger. So if I went ahead and tried to air seal this, um, this duct to the plywood, you can see this is just really flimsy. This is never going to seal well at all. Um, because obviously we need to keep the sound inside of the box so it needs to be sealed around this flexible duct. So the solution is just to simply transfer it to some metal for a few inches and this will connect together like this and then this will actually poke outside of the box. And then where the plywood is meets this metal, I can go ahead and caulk that and just create a really good seal.
So real quick before I go ahead and insulate all these boxes, these are the two boxes that are going in the live room, the vocal booth area. Um, and these are on an, a slanted angle because of the pitch of the roof and it being so close to the actual ceiling. So I had to make these very complex boxes. But once again, you know, uh, just trying to stop that direct sound from coming here to here. So it just is blocked by here and this so that that sound has to kind of travel around this box to come out. Ex same exact situation as the other boxes. Okay, so the insulation that I'm using is R13, which is three and a half inch thick fiberglass insulation. And most importantly, it is unfaced. Now unfaced means the one side of the insulation doesn't have that paper on it. That paper is a vapor barrier. So this bag, I only bought one of them. It's 106 square feet. You know, after you put all the duct in there and the baffles and everything, those big boxes actually seem much smaller now. So. I think this should be enough insulation to fill all four of the baffle boxes. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling them up and uh, we'll see if this is enough. Since then, I went ahead and added another layer onto each baffle box. Um, this is 5H drywall. So now the baffle boxes are half inch plywood with 5H drywall on them. Now adding the 5H drywall helps to increase the mass and the density of each box, which allows less sound to escape through the box. And obviously that's the whole point of it because sound and air are gonna be coming through this box. We need to minimize the sound and let the air transfer. So when I was adding this drywall, just every joint, I just added the acoustic caulking, just like I did on all the boxes, all the joints, uh, nothing special. I added this Tyvek tape um, on each seam and it was really just to clean it up a little bit and help hide that ugly live edge um, of the drywall. And that's really the only reason for taping it. It is time to actually go ahead and mount all these into place. Now, because I added the 5H drywall, they are already heavy before, now they are extremely heavy. So I'm actually going to lift these into place using a big crank and winch type thing to be able to pull them up in the ceiling. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start mounting these things. Okay, so this box is floating, being held up by these, uh, Big tie down straps. It's on a steel cable to the ceiling here and it goes to a pulley and then to a winch. <laughs> this should be interesting. Okay, so I got the first baffle box in place. You can see it is fully secured. It is only sitting on the live room joist, so it is not touching anything else. You can see by the angle of the top, that's why I had to build the box like it is because I had to follow the contour of the roof, so I had a height restriction there. And then that port right there, that duct, 
will make its way on over to this slimline uh, heating and cooling unit. So back in the live room, you can see this is the baffle box all mounted into place. So you can see it'll be flush with the drywall like this. And this duct will be um, the only thing that like comes through the finished drywall. This box is mounted to the inner room. Okay, so not the outer room. This is the outer and this is the inner. So it's secured to the inner and that's how we man mechanically disconnect this from the rest of the system. And uh, I use some really, really big bulky construction screws are rated at 1200 pounds. And uh, this whole box kind of wants to push this end up uh, mainly just because of the way it had to be mounted. So I will put another two by four across the front of this so that I can screw in and just uh, just a little extra added support. So up in the attic now, uh, that is for the control room. That's one of the eight inch ones. That is actually the heat exchanger. So that's what makes the hot and cold air. 18,000 BTUs of it. And then that last one right there, that is the other baffle box for the uh, control room. And obviously they were, are very close to the actual heat exchanger here. So the, the duck runs will be nice and short. And then if we just turn around right here, these are the other two. This is for the live room, the vocal booth. These are the six inch ones, the slanted ones. So both of these don't really have a far distance either to make it to the heat exchanger. So they're all kind of nicely clumped together. And that was by design. And also that was kind of the only way that they were gonna work up in here. Okay, without getting into too much detail, um, the very middle, this is the eight inch, this is the six inch, and that's the four. So you can see I just took duck boots, which uh, transforms the, uh, the duct from round to rectangular, as you can see here. And this is six inches wide. This is 36 inches long. And uh, this little guy, once again, is for the mud room. So just a little four inch duct, just to put a teeny bit of heat in there. Obviously the bigger one is for the control room because of the space. And then this is for the live room because it's smaller. And I just cut some sheet metal to size and then fit the ducts on here. Screwed it all together and now I'll go ahead and just tape it all up. And then I can go ahead and mount it on my heating air conditioning unit. Okay, so up in the attic here, this is a quick look at now that everything is hooked up and connected, it might make a little bit more sense. So this is the heating and cooling unit and the hot or cold air comes out of here. And then one of them goes to here, to this first baffle box, which is for the control room. That's the eight inch duct. And then we got another one here. This is a six inch duct. And this runs over to here to the vocal booth live room area. Okay, and so this heating and cooling unit needs to draw air from somewhere. And it's from the back side here. As you can see, that eight inch duct in the back there, that is for the control room. And that's where the return air is coming from. And then additionally for the live room, the vocal booth, uh, this is the six inch duct that is giving the return air back to this heating and cooling unit. So after I'm able to turn this heating and cooling unit on and make sure everything works and there's no vibrations and uh, nothing else needs to be sealed up any further. Um, I'll use some of this insulation. It's just uh, R6 foil and fiberglass. And that'll wrap around the big metal pieces of duct, that the trunks, I guess you would call them, that kind of distribute um, the air to different places. And I'll insulate those because obviously we are in the attic, so this is the unconditioned air. So. You know, in just about every situation, the studio is going to be the opposite temperature of what the attic will be. So, you know, we also don't want to introduce um, cold air, you know, when we're trying to heat or vice versa, the hot air when we're trying to cool. And uh, yeah, for the most part, though, this heating and cooling system is done. Now it's just really cutting holes for the drywall, hooking up the little thermostat for it, and I can turn it on and have heat finally, and I can't wait for that day. Okay, so just to quickly wrap this video up, if I could go back and do these boxes just one more time, I probably wouldn't use the plywood and the drywall together. It was just kind of, I just felt like it made the box building more difficult. I might use like an MDF or a chipboard or something that was a little bit more uniform where I could have just maybe two layers of three quarter inch material stacked on top of each other. Just might make it a little easier to build. So now that you've seen how they are built, now I want to go a step further and actually like test these baffle boxes out. I want to take a piece of flexible ductwork that's straight. 
I want to take a piece that is, you know, wound up. I want to test the baffle boxes. I want to know, you know, really what is the difference of using, you know, something as simple as the metal rigid ductwork or the flexible and then also the flexible inside the baffle box. I want to see, I want to, I want some numbers on how well these baffle boxes actually truly work. So in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and test the baffle boxes and essentially going to put a speaker at one end and a microphone at the, at the other and just kind of see how much noise they truly reduce. Additionally, by that time, the whole heating and cooling system should be up and running. So I'll be able to also get a decibel meter out and um, hear how loud the, the actual heating and cooling unit is after it runs through the ductwork and the baffle boxes and comes out the other end. I'm hoping you won't be able to hear the heating and cooling unit at all, including the fans or anything. I'm just, I'm hoping it's just gonna be silent coming out of the duct. So look for that video on testing these baffle boxes. That is coming up next. I will link that in the description of this video. But until then, I'm gonna keep building the studio and I will see you guys in another video. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.